Access TV moving away from or having to move away from Mauro Ranallo, usually that would be a step back. For you, that's not the case. They they really went out and proved that they were committed to to New Japan on Access. What is the feeling that you get uh, about their commitment to to New Japan? Well, when uh, Mauro came to them to uh, let them know that he was going to WWE, they they wasted no time in contacting my business manager and uh, made it clear that I was their top priority, which is always nice to know. But you still got to get a deal, and uh, you know I had to I had to we had to talk about travel, and you know you always get back down to the bottom line of what you're going to get paid, and they stepped up to everything. They were they were committed to make sure that I was going to be working with Josh Barnett uh, come uh, Friday, March the 4th. And so it, was a, it wasn't it was a hard decision. I, I love the product. I like going to Los Angeles. Uh, it's, a, it's a great job to have uh, with the wife that I have because she loves L.A. So eight to ten times a year we fly out there. I do a couple of days' worth of voiceovers uh, and have a blast. It's just there's no pressure. Uh, and it's just you get to go out there and be creative and, Free flowing and have fun, and I, I think that's going to show up and sound that way on our on our broadcast. Now I know that you you, I, I believe you had Morrow on your podcast before. Did you speak to him at all about the New Japan gig or him going to WWE? No, not a bit, because I'm assuming uh, that Morrow and WWE are negotiating in confidence. So I didn't talk to him at all about uh, the gig until uh, he already he got it, which. I congratulated him, and you know he was <laughs> pardon me happy to hear that. Uh, we're friends; been friends a long time. We respect each other's work. I think he's one of the best hires WWE's made in a long time, and uh, so. But we didn't talk about it. But I watched their show every Friday night. You know, I was a regular fan, a viewer of uh, New Japan on on Access, so uh, I was very familiar with the style, the you know, uh, the cadence, how Josh worked. Uh, how Morrow did his thing, and and I'm going to be a little different than him because we're just different guys. But uh, we didn't we didn't discuss it beforehand. I didn't really, you know, I was just happy for him. He was going to WWE, which I know he's been wanting to do for years. Did Josh Barnett make sure that you called a double wrist lock or a double wrist lock a double wrist lock? Did, did, have you called it a Kimura yet, and has he admonished you? No, he hasn't, and I haven't. <laughs> I, I am. Uh, I knew what a double wrist lock was from the days of. That was Lutez's go-to hold back in the back yeah. in the shooting days when he was a traveling NWA champion. He was his go-to hold was the double wrist lock. And uh, then Danny Hodge was a big Lutez devotee, and Danny Hodge was my boyhood hero. So, uh, you know, he was a double wrist lock aficionado as well. And only only since uh, the proliferation of USC on television has the Kimura uh, found a pulse uh, in this in the lexicon that we're discussing. I did a seminar with uh, Billy Robinson before he passed, and of course he's a big cat wrestler, and he said the only person who's allowed to call it a Kimura is Kimura. Yeah, so, uh, that, works, that works for me. <laughs> um, now, I, I saw that you said that you had spoken to WWE about some guys that you saw at Wrestle Kingdom 9. Is that something you'd still do, calling this show and for New Japan or Access? Well, you know, I was going to... Uh, I was going to uh, Florida, and I was uh, uh, when and I, oh, I got a great friendship with William Regal, who does a lot of scouting for WWE, for one of the unsung heroes there. But when I got back from Japan, I had the occasion to talk to Vince, and, and I talked to uh, Paul Levesque, and of course I keep a regular communication with uh, with Regal, uh, and I just mentioned, you know, I, it was a great experience. I enjoyed calling wrestling again. It was fun to watch the show live, and 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 by the way, uh, New Japan's got some hellacious talent, and one yeah. of those guys we talked about obviously was AJ Styles, who I thought was always a player, even when he was in TNA, he was a player, and then going over to see him Nakamura in person was uh, was really uh, memorable for me. So I uh, I thought he was, I thought he, I think he's just an amazing. He could be really, really big for WWE. I think he has a great opportunity. So I just told those guys my impressions of what I saw and, <clears throat> and who I liked. And, and uh, then, you know, all of a sudden, you know, uh, whether that had anything to do with it or not, 
uh, Nakamura, AJ, Gallows, and Anderson are all signed with WWE, and I'm happy for all those guys. It's a, it's a new chapter for them. It's a fresh start, something new, so it's, it's good. And I think as long as they're allowed to be basically themselves, I think uh, uh, WWE is really on to something big with those guys. Uh, have you heard from anybody in the WWE about the new gig? And if so, how did they feel about it? About my new gig? Yeah. No, I have not. Probably won't. But uh, <laughs> I'm sure they're – well, I'll take that back. I, I did talk to Vince uh, early on. He congratulated me. And uh, I said it's, a, it's interesting that I'm probably one of the only men on earth that have worked for Ted Turner, Vince McMahon, and Mark Cuban in their lifetime. Oh, wow. So uh, three great entrepreneurs with vision, visionaries and – so, uh, but anyway, he's uh, he was happy for me. That I, I, he knows how much I love calling wrestling and broadcasting it. So, uh, to be able to get some skin back in the game on a product that I really like, with a travel schedule that I can live with, uh, and working with a really cool bunch of guys, uh, like they have an access. It's great when the upper management guys are old school wrestling fans, and when you got younger executives that grew up watching my work, it's it's a uh, it's unique. It's it's a little it's, it's a little bit daunting to be honest with you, uh, because y- you want to be better than they grew up hearing. So uh, that's why I, I, every time I sit down and put the headsets on, I feel compelled to do better than I did the last time. So, uh, but I, that's I think that's a good habit to be in, not getting in that comfort zone and residing there, because nothing grows in a comfort zone. It's like being in a shade. You need sunlight to grow. Uh, we mentioned the the big roster turnover that's happened with New Japan recently. Uh, who have been some of your pa- favorite performers to to call their matches so far for New Japan on Access? Uh, I like uh, Okada. I like Tanahashi. Obviously, the two big two. Uh, I like uh, Kushida, Super Junior Heavyweight Champion. Uh, Josh and I have a match coming up in a few weeks with Kushida and Alex, or excuse me, Kyle O'Reilly. That was one of my favorite matches of the year last year. Yeah, and uh, we got to, that's one match for the whole show, and I just yeah. was blown away with it. I thought, well, because see, I didn't, I didn't cheat and go watch the whole match. I just figured that because they're super juniors, I, I unfairly stereotyped them in my head, thinking it's going to be a, a high spot fest or the flying Orlandis, and it's going to be flip flop and fly, and no selling. Uh, but <laughs> I was wrong. And the use I, of that I, double wrist lock was beautiful. Great match, and I hope we do it justice. I'm anxious to for folks to see it. But uh, Kashida's good. Uh, the uh, Ishii's good. Uh, gosh, let me think. Uh, oh shoot, there's so many guys there that have that are just you know our, our major players. Uh, oh Shibata, real good. If he's going to be around, hopefully he'll be around for our matches this summer. Uh, yeah, he's 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 a Exceptional. Uh, as I mentioned, uh, Ibushi is good. Uh, they got they have a lot of guys. Uh, they have a lot of talent. I'm anxious to see. I'm, I'm glad I'm there for a lot of reasons, but I'm really excited to be able to call some of uh, Fifth Finley's son David's first matches and Scott Hall's son Cody's first matches when they when they finally get up to uh, the next level up and they stay there a while. So and 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 they will because they're both going to be very good. Uh, I'm also doing a feature on the, the Brawl for All tournament that happened in the 90s. What were your feelings when that idea was presented? Because I know you're a, a boxing and MMA fan as well. I didn't like it. Uh, you're mixing metaphors. Uh, I We had a lot of guys that raised their hand and wanted to do it, couldn't wait. Uh, and uh, I just – the rules are loose and lax. Uh, we've kind of figured things out as we went along. Uh, the, 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 the bill for the medical bill for the injuries was uh, ridiculous. Uh, you know, the, of course, the ongoing innuendo of the fact that it was, we paid Dr. Depp before the match and he was declared the winner is some ridiculous, uh, wise tale, which is crazy. Uh, so I, I, I didn't like a lot of the things about the brawl for it all. I didn't like the injuries. I didn't like the way it was laid out. I didn't like the lax rules. Uh, I thought it was a knee-jerk, creative decision. Uh, I wish we'd never done it. Uh, and uh, a lot of the things you hear about it, as far as you know, my relationship with Bart Gunn not being good, which is absolutely 
ridiculous. It's asinine. It's embarrassing, uh, in my view. So, uh, and the Dr. Death storyline, all that was uh, a, uh, you know, people say, well, gee, I was really angry when Doc got beat. I was angry because he tore his quadricep from the knee. It rolled up his leg. And we've got a 40-something-year-old wrestler that we want to bring in for one more run. Uh, and now that whole run, the, all that investment, everything is gone. Had nothing to do with him losing. Had everything to do with him getting injured and never being the same again. So, uh, well, I didn't like it, obviously. So, you know, I, I and, and the fact that it's the legend of the brawl for all has grown. Uh, you know, Bob Holly and I had I had Bob Holly in my Ross Report podcast because he had written about you know. The doc got paid. And it was an inside job. So I had him on my show to talk about it. And and ironically, he didn't hear me say it. He didn't hear the office say it. Dr. Death told him that. And Doc, oh, wow. course, the wrestlers are the wrestlers. They're going to always tell you. One of the great arguments and the great controversies in any wrestling locker room is for wrestlers to start talking about their paydays or their money with their peers because they never, they rarely tell the truth. And they're always throwing out a little bit of line and embellishing their pay so they can look better than their peer and they can create a little bit of controversy. And I love Doc like a brother, but uh, he's no different than any other Du Bois. You know, he wanted to make himself look better than he was. And and, uh, and we actually thought, you know, he had a good chance to win it if he had wrestled in more of an MMA-style match than, than fought. But a lot of those guys wanted to go out there and, and, and show everybody that they could box. And very, very few could box whatsoever. Mark Gunn was yeah. by far the best of the group, by far, because everybody wanted to stand and throw punches, and he was really, really good at that. Yeah, I, I watched. I watched them over, and uh, I thought Steve Blackman had a good, good game plan. Honestly, he just acted like it was a video game and repeatedly took Mark Marrow down, a Golden Gloves boxer, and unfortunately, he he withdrew from the tournament. Looking back on that, Jim, I mean, I know that Ken Shamrock was pitched pitched the idea to do it because he told me, but. Isn't it a little terrifying that you had guys like Dan Severn and Ken Shamrock facing guys who had, or possibly facing guys who had no fight experience? Of course it is. That's why I didn't like it. You're going to get <laughs> alpha males into an, an arena that they're not proficient in, and then they're going to look, maybe look bad. Then they're going to react some way because nobody's just going to walk away and say, well, that's another day at the office. It's not another day at the office. You're on live national global television. And you're and you're you look like Ned in the first reader. Nobody's going to react to that well. So, uh, you know, I, I, it was it was ill advised in the start. It's, nothing about it made sense to me. 